Hello everyone, welcome back to the Denver Broncos franchise. In the last episode, we shut out the Detroit Lions, improved to 6-8, and eight, and most importantly, Baron Browning earned superstar development. That is a big, big deal for this defense, and it's going to help out a lot. Baron Browning is interesting because he is a decent pass rusher and a slightly worse guy in pass coverage but he's not far off of just being an all-around phenomenal linebacker i don't think i want to increase his pass coverage though i think we continue upgrading his rushing ability that's what i'm gonna do our rusher upgrade he gets plus two power moves plus one tackle and he will start to develop much, much faster with superstar development. There's only three weeks left in the regular season, and this week we're facing off against the 10 and 4 Patriots. And I think that's a good time to take a look at the standings around the divisions. In the AFC North, the Browns and Ravens are 10 and 4, the Bengals 8 and 6, and the Steelers 4 and 10. In the South, the Jags 7 and 7, the Titans 7 and 7, Colts 6 and 8, and Texans 5 and 9. In the AFC East, the Bills are 11 and 3 and have clinched a playoff spot. The Pats are 10 and 4. Dolphins are down at six and eight and the jets are also down at six and eight the chiefs of course in the afc west are 12 and two have already won the division chargers are seven and seven we are six and eight and the raiders are five and nine in the nfc north the seven and seven vikings are in the lead and then it's the six and eight lions six and eight packers five and nine bears the panthers are nine and five leading the south the bucks are eight and six saints are seven and seven and falcons are six and eight it's a very close division in the nfc east the cowboys are nine and five the giants seven and seven the commies seven and seven and the eagles six and eight and then in the nfc west the 49ers the only team performing well there ten and four where the rams the cardinals and the seahawks are all having terrible seasons if we take a look at the playoff picture you'll see that the seven seed is the Bengals, who are eight and six so if they win one more game they would be guaranteed nine and eight at worst as the seven seed essentially what this means is i think we're screwed i don't think that there is a world where the broncos can make the playoffs of course six and eight obviously already doesn't look good but even if we won out i don't think nine and eight would necessarily be enough we aren't mathematically out of playoff contention but it definitely feels like it and honestly i don't know what we're gonna do about next season the cap room if you see in the top right is still negative 26 million for the following season Season. I haven't been able to offer any of these people contracts for the next season where I really, really want to. We might have to just like trade things away in the offseason and just blow the team up. Like it, it might be time for a pretty fresh start for Denver, which maybe isn't ideal in terms of season two like we're probably going to get worse season two if i were to do that but it would fix the cap situation and in the long term it might be for the best so it might make us really really terrible in season two at least temporarily but i think in the future it'll help out a lot in all honesty i think that's what denver needs to do in real life anyway is just blow it up and start a full full rebuild be really terrible for a couple seasons and then try to work your way back to the top through drafting but anyway let's move on to the weekly strategy and get into our game against the Patriots. Then short pass against McCorkle Jones. And then blitz counter against the Pats seems good because they have Judon, obviously, who's like a premier edge rusher, but they also have Josh Uche, who is really good as well. Go ahead and start this training and see if anyone got injured. Looks like no injuries so far offensively. We're good to go there. And defensively, it looks like K1 Williams has a dislocated wrist. Now, this is interesting. K1 had honestly been playing fairly poorly the last three, four weeks. He is only 87 speed. He's very slow. I do think this could serve as a great opportunity for like Damari Mathis to show what he has as a wide receiver too. And then we can have Fabian Moreau in the slot or even maybe give Riley Moss a shot in the slot and see what the young guys can do. I'm going to let Damari Mathis be the number two. I'm going to let Fabian Moreau be the number three. He's much better in zone coverage. He's a bit better all the way around than Riley Moss. So I'm scrolling through the helmets for Montreal Washington, and I think it's less the helmet and more the particular face model he has. Almost all of them look really dumb. This face model just has a big chin. Uh, it just goes straight through the chin strap. This one looks at least a bit like him. So we'll do this face scan and then I, that should just make his helmet look fine. Yeah, see, now the helmet doesn't look stupid as hell. And then finally, we do have some player upgrades. It, oh, it's Drew Sanders. Honestly, I just want to get his pass coverage up even more. So we will work on that. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get into this matchup against the Patriots. Back 
at Empower Field at Mile High. I want to say we were on like a three-game road trip or something like that before this game. Ryan Tannehill's stats on the season are looking decent, honestly. Not bad. We'll see Mac Jones' stats when he gets on the field. But let's get into this matchup against the Patriots. The Broncos will start with the football, and we will see Ryan Tannehill in his last three games as the official starter. Maybe he will start past this point. I'm not too sure. I will look to re-sign him because it would be nice to have that quarterback with a mentor tag definitely not a necessity especially if he's asking for a lot of money but we will see anyway from the 25 first and 10 first play of the day goes to running back javante williams who makes a move to the outside and has a pickup of six that makes it second down and four and we'll go back to javante can't run anybody over and it's going to be third and short on third and one will we be able to convert i'm gonna hit javante just very quickly just get the easy first down, only needed a yard, got four, and have a fresh set of downs. First and 10 from the 38, handoff to Javante. Falls forward, ends up being another pickup of six. Makes it second and four. Tannehill looking to throw and hit as he throws. Goes incomplete in the direction of Montreal Washington. Third and four, looking to convert here. Look for Washington knocked away, thrown probably just a half second too late couldn't get in there and we'll have to punt so the Patriots will start with the ball from their own 11 and that is where we will see Mac Jones take the field for the first time today he has his Patriots at 10 and 4 and he has incredibly similar stats to Ryan Tannehill I think like 200 less yards otherwise the same keep in mind that Damari Mathis is playing in place of the injured K1 Williams on one of the outside corner positions in the CB2 position. As this is a run for... Is that Ezekiel Elliott on the carry? It is a pickup of 19. He wears number 15. Interesting. First and 10 from the 30 after the big Ezekiel Elliott run. What is wrong with his jersey? Are you guys seeing that? There's like a... Is his pad coming out the back of his jersey or something? It's very strange. Second and five. I do think that that is part of his shoulder pad sticking out the back of his jersey. It just looks like he has a very fancy one. And a blitz. Drew Sanders in the backfield. Mac Jones throws it away. Third and five. Trying to prevent the Patriots from converting here. Mac Jones will look to throw. Running out of time. Throws it away again. Fourth down. They'll have to punt it away. Broncos take back over from the 24. First play of the series is a handoff to Javante Williams. Picks up three and Josh Uche is injured. Second and seven from the 27. We're going to be looking to throw here, and I just held on to the ball way too long. There were options, and I just held it. Third and seven now. After I held on to the ball for about 92 minutes, we'll hit Montreal Washington. Can he get the first? I think he does. He does indeed to the 35. From the 35 on first and 10, going back to Javante Williams. Get a good downfield block from Dulcich, and it's a pickup of five. Second and five, Samaj P. Ryan is in the game. We'll hand it off to him. And it gains one yard. This definitely feels like a much tougher defense than that Lions defense we faced a week ago. Go for Jerry Judy. He makes the grab and is up to midfield down at the 49. It's another fresh set of downs for the Broncos. First and 10. We will look to throw for Manhurts knocked away. Tyler Beatty is checked into the game on second and 10 from the 49. And you know we're going to him. That is the case. Doesn't get very far, though. It'll be third and six. Third down from the 47. Would love to convert here. So this is going to be a check down to Beatty, and he's got the first down up to the 37. First down, Denver. Beatty went from being not involved in the offense at all to getting a number of touches every single game. And you know what? Good for him, as he has another pickup of three here. Javante Williams is checked back in, and they have the box pretty empty here, so I'm actually going to switch this to a run, and it goes to Javante. He stiff arms that man, but instead of losing one, he loses none, so it's not really much to write home about. Third and seven. Tannehill looking to throw and sacked very quickly by Matthew Judon. And that is Mike McGlinchey's side. And he's supposed to be a pretty good tackle. I think he probably just got dusted on this play. So, Will Lutz is on to attempt a 58-yard field goal. And that kick is up. Does it have the leg? It does. It is good. Three on the board 
for Denver. So what can the Patriots do as they take back over? Down by three now. Elliott's still in the backfield. It is a pitch to him. And he's going to get brought down by DJ Jones and Pat Sertan. Second and ten for the Patriots. Jones throwing, finds his man. That is Gesicki, I think, wide open. Breaks Justin Simmons' tackle and is brought down by Drew Sanders. But a huge gain for the Patriots. First and ten from the 39. I formation. It's a fake handoff to Zeke. And a throw down the field and then caught. And out of bounds at the one goes Ferkser. What a throw from Mac Jones. Just absolute dot. I mean, perfect. Just right in the bucket. Damari Mathis got beat. First and goal Patriots off of the big play. And can they punch it in here? Likely going to Zeke. It's not. And it's going to be a sack. One part Baron Browning. One part Caden Stearns. Second and goal from the 11. That is quite the hit to this goal to go down. And Baron Browning, a TFL on the very next play. Minus two yards for the Patriots. Third and goal from the 13. That brings us to the end of the first quarter. 3-0 Denver with the Patriots in prime position to add some points of their own. Empty set for Mac Jones. Ezekiel Elliott lined up sort of as a tight end. It looks like he's staying in the block, which is very interesting. Jones throws it away on third and goal. It goes to fourth and goal, and I'm guessing they will attempt a field goal here. They are on to attempt a field goal. I don't think that is their usual kicker. Who is this kicker? Whoever it is, their field goal was good. It is 3-2-3, three three, and Denver will take over. First and 10 Denver from the 25. That kicker was Chad Ryland, by the way, which is New England's normal kicker. From the 25, we'll hand it off to Javante Williams, who has a pickup of three. I feel like the downfield coverage for the Patriots has been really good so far. It's been hard to move the ball through the air. Dump it off to Pirine, and he gets maybe a yard from the 29. Third and six, looking for a pretty big conversion here to Marvin Mims, laid out, knocked the ball away. Fourth and six, we'll punt it away. So first and 10 Patriots from the 23 as Denver goes three and out. Elliott still in the backfield, looking like it's a run for him. DJ Jones was there in the backfield quickly, uh, got shaken off. Juju Smith-Schuster is injured. No gain on the previous play, so I imagine they may be going to the air here on second and 10. From the 23, Jones throwing quickly. That is caught by tight end Mike Gesicki. Third and two coming up. On third and two. Patriots looking to get the conversion with Ezekiel Elliott. They're going to get that and quite a bit more as he breaks that to the second level. Down to the 42, first and 10 Patriots. So from the 42, fresh set of downs for the Patriots. And it'll be another handoff to Ezekiel Elliott, brought down by Nick Benito, who makes a good tackle there. It'll be second and three. They are running the ball a lot, and Ezekiel Elliott looks like he never lost a step. This time it's a throw, a quick one out to the right side. And that'll be another first down, a throw to Kendrick Bourne. So, on first and 10, from the 45, somebody jumped. That'll be a false start. And the Patriots will be moving it back. Make that first and 15 from the 50. Mac Jones changing up the play a bit before taking the snap from under center. Fires across the middle. That is Devontae Parker on the reception. Second and seven. I have kind of a gut feeling they're running it here. My gut was wildly incorrect, and that is going to be a reception for backup tight end Anthony Ferkser. Baron Browning brings him down. It's third and five. Denver looking for a stop here, holding the Patriots to yet another field goal would be ideal, obviously. As Jones throwing for Gesicki. He brings it in, but is well short. It's fourth and two. We'll see what the Pats decide to do. They are lined up to go for this. Fourth and two, six and a half minutes left to play here in the second quarter from the 37. It is a throw, and it's caught by Devontae Parker, and he's got the first down up to the Denver 25. The defense definitely not looking quite as good today as they did against the Lions, which, you know, you can't expect that week to week, as that is a tackle for Patrick Sertan, a pickup of one. Second and nine from the 24. 
Jones will throw, finds his man. It's Ferkser again, and he lays out Pat Sertan, juked Damari Mathis. Maybe this man deserves more snaps. That makes it first and 10 from the 15 after the big play from the second string tight end. And this one is a fake to Zeke. And then a throw across the middle for Ferkser again. And he has a pickup of about six. Ferks are getting a ton of love here early on. Second and four from the nine. Mac Jones looking to throw. Throwing for Gesicki. Knocked out of his hands. Devin Bush and I think Caden Stearns there in coverage. Looking for the stop. Hold the Patriots to a field goal. Better yet, let's get a turnover right here. I don't see that happening, but, you know, crazier things have happened. Mac Jones throws across the middle and it is caught. That is Kendrick Bourne in the end zone. Touchdown Patriots. They take the lead of the game for the first time today. And it will likely be 10-3 when you see the Broncos retake the field. 10-3. First and 10 from the 25 for Denver. Four minutes left to play here in the first half. Looking to throw for Jerry Judy. And it's knocked out of his hands. A little too much touch on that one. This passing attack has just not been working so far today. See what we can do here on second and 10. There's a free blitzer and Tannehill goes down. I tried to throw it away and it didn't work. Holy cow. I thought we were past this. <laughs> the left tackle and left guard both just dip. Garrett Bowles and Ben Powers are both like, eh. Nah. That makes it third and 19. This is not looking convertible. Looking for Jerry Judy. It is convertible if you have Jerry Judy. Up to the 49, first and 10, Denver. The big play for the young wide receiver, Jerry Judy. Sees Denver at midfield, the first and 10. This is going to be a carry for Javante Williams. Has a good block from Judy. And is up to the 39. There we go. The momentum starting to swing a little bit. You can feel it. First and 10. Denver looking to throw again. Tannehill stepping up. Looking for Mims. Makes the grab. Goes to the ground. Gets out of bounds. And it's the two-minute warning. So, first and 10 outside of the two-minute warning. Looking for Dulcich over the top. A great throw from Tannehill. And he's down at the one. First and goal, Denver coming up. First and goal from the one. The clock is still running. A minute and a half left to play. It's a handoff to Samaj P. Ryan, and he is short of the end zone marker. Second and goal from the one. Handoff, Javante Williams. Can he punch it in? Yes, he can. Touchdown, Broncos. And we are probably going to have a tie game here. Javante Williams does what Samaj P. Ryan cannot. Punches this into the end zone. And the Broncos going to tie it up. The only issue with that score from the Broncos is that it was a little fast. So the Patriots do still have one minute in all of their timeouts to try to add more points before the half ends. 10-10 to 10 at the moment. We are in zone coverage. That's a missed throw from Mac Jones. Devontae Parker was wide open. It's part of why I don't like zone coverage for this team. I just don't know if we have the personnel for it. I feel like we're much better in man. Although with Kwan Williams out, that may not actually be true. Damari Mathis with the interception. This is going to be a pick six. Damari Mathis playing in CB2 for the injured K1 Williams. Picks this ball off and runs it back for a touchdown. Pick six, Denver. What in the world? Damari Mathis, that was a very athletic play. Jumping the route, staying in bounds, keeping his balance, and running this back for a touchdown going to be 17 to 10. Patriots take back over. There's still basically the same amount of time on the clock. First and 10. That is a catch. Second and four. They did burn that first time out. 52 seconds left to play. Mac Jones out of the shotgun. Will be throwing. Across the middle. Caught by Kendrick Bourne. Met by like five Broncos defenders. From the 40. They're in the hurry up. Jones throws quickly. That is caught by Gesicki. Second and three, they burn another timeout. So on second and three, 30 seconds left. Throwing across the middle, Justin Simmons maybe could have picked that off. And now Zach Allen is injured. We are, of course, already without Frank Clark. To lose Zach Allen as well is very unfortunate. So that'll see AJ Epinesa getting even more snaps as this is incomplete. And it's fourth and three from their own 43. Will they punt this away? A good start to this return from Jaleel McLaughlin. Started around the 10, got to the 33, and Denver has 
a little bit of time still. Just an update as Zach Allen's injury was not very serious. On first and 10 from the 33. That was a bad decision to throw, but a worse play by the defender. And Greg Dulcich has a big gain. To the 41, we're basically already in field goal range. It was a bad decision to throw by Tannehill, but a worse play on the ball by the Patriots defender. Tannehill rolling. I'm going to dump this off to Mims. Get a little closer. Call a timeout with just a couple seconds left. And we'll add a field goal, or at least attempt to, with Will Lutz. 51 yards, not necessarily a chip shot by any means, but he made a 58-yarder already. And this one is up. It is right down the middle. And Denver will take a 20-10 lead into the half. It was honestly looking like the Patriots were going to have a lead heading into the half, but that pick six from Mac Jones has really flipped this game on its head, and Denver has a 10-point lead. I believe we're in Sunday night football, so a lot of these games around the league should be finished, so we will take a look. The Rams are playing the Saints and have won 21-14. They improved to 6-9, and nine, and the Saints fall to 7-8. and eight. The Bengals in Pittsburgh, playing the Steelers, have won that 24-13. They are 9-6, and six, and Trevor Simeon is their quarterback joe burrow must be injured let's start with the ball here in the second half i'll check on if joe burrow is actually injured at the end of the episode when we get out of this game this is a completion to Devonte parker right out the gate and down at the 43 first and 10 from the 43 zeke has not seen a ton of attention since the first half does get a carry here drew standers and caden stearns Combined for the tackle. I'm not entirely positive, but I think I may have called Drew Sanders, Drew Standers, which is kind of funny. Second and five for the Patriots, completely changing up the play. Loaded set to the right now. It is a fake to Zeke. AJ Epines is in the backfield, and it's a throwaway for Mac Jones. Third and five coming up. Third down from the 48. What can McCorkle do? He can look to throw, taking his sweet time, taking a shot down the field, and it is well out of bounds in the direction of Juju Smith-Schuster. Fourth and five, I imagine they are punting it away. A good punt sees the Broncos starting from their own nine. Samaj P. Ryan is in the backfield, and we'll go to him for the first play of the second half. And it is a pickup of four. Second and six as Javante Williams retakes the field from the 13. We are going to run with Javante. And he is tackled from behind after a gain of about one, third and five coming up. A lot of these Patriots players have their like shoulder pads sticking out the back of their jersey, which is a little stupid looking. Looking for Jerry Judy. Makes the grab, breaks the tackle. Does he have the breakaway speed to get to the end zone? To the 20, to the 10. Nobody's going to catch him. Touchdown, Jerry Judy. He is the wide receiver one here in Denver for a long time to come. Jerry Judy makes a great catch already while contested, breaks the tackle at the same time, and breaks away for a touchdown for the Broncos. The Patriots take back over from their own 25, now down 27 to 10, where it seemed like things were going pretty well for them. And speaking of things going well, that is a good run for Ezekiel Elliott, and Baron Browning, newly superstar, is injured on the play. Hopefully that's not serious, but even if it is, we are likely not a playoff team, so it's not the end of the world. It also does free up Nick Benito to get a chance, and he's a player I think could actually be pretty good for this team. Pat Sertan breaks up this pass. That's a bruised sternum for Baron Browning. It means he will miss the rest of this game, but he should be fine going forward. Nick Benito will take his spot at least as the blitzer. We'll see who takes his spot when he lines up as an actual sort of off-line linebacker, off-ball linebacker. Second and 10, Jones throws, and that is complete for Devontae Parker. And Nick Benito gets injured two plays later. Who does that bring in? That sees Drew Sanders lining up on the edge. He's actually probably a better blitzer than Nick Benito is, so that is not... The worst thing, at least for this game. Second and 10 upcoming after the incompletion. All right, I've changed up the depth chart a touch. Should be DJ Jones and Zach Allen in the middle. Right now it's J2 Fele. And then AJ Epinesa will be lining up on the edge. It'll be third and five here for the Patriots. Nick Benito has a broken thumb. 
I imagine he will miss this game and probably at least next game, right? So that means Zach Allen, who's only out for the rest of the quarter, Baron Browning, K1 Williams, Frank Clark, Nick Benito are all injured. So our front seven is very injured right now. I mean, this is these are four starters that are out. Well, Nick Benito, not necessarily a starter, but really good depth. We've got three starters and a really good depth player out on our defensive line. So we are we're hurting. We have good depth on D-line, though. Just no one is really amazing. Like AJ Epinesa is a starter on a lot of teams. But for us, obviously, he is a second stringer, but a really good one at that. As Mac Jones throws this one out of the side of the end zone. And it's fourth and five. Patriots are lined up for a field goal here from the 24. That kick is up. It is good. And it is 27 to 13 in favor of Denver. Denver takes over from their own 25. It's first and 10. Eight minutes left to go here in the third quarter. Throwing to Marvin Mims, who has good speed, jukes out a defender, and gets up to the 40 before he's brought down. I truly believe that Marvin Mims will be our wide receiver two of the future. If not, he will be a fantastic slot option. It's Javante Williams on the carry has a pickup of four. We kind of just need one more receiver to really complete the trio, I think. I don't think that Montrell Washington is that guy. On second and six, we'll go back to Javante Williams. Has space here to the outside and goes down at the Patriots 45. Obviously, I think Jerry Judy with superstar development has the talent to become a true wide receiver one. He's not quite on that level just yet, but he will get there as this is a sack. Down goes Ryan Tannehill. Second and 20 from the 45 after the sack. We're going play action. Tannehill will look to throw. Jerry Judy wide open across the middle. Has the reception down at the 27. Another big gain for the superstar wide receiver. First and 10 from the 27. It's a handoff to Javante, and it goes next to nowhere. The run defense for the Patriots has been quite good. So they can't complain about that particularly. Throw this for Mims. Can he juke out Judon? No, he cannot. And he is short of the first. Third and inches from the 17. So on third and inches, Tannehill takes the snap up the gut. Javante Williams has the first down up to the 14. First and 10, Denver. Tyler Beatty checks in. Give Javante Williams a little bit of a rest. First and 10 from the 14 it is a run for Beatty. And doesn't have a ton of room to work with. It's a pickup of two. Second and eight for the Broncos. Will Dulcich just be wide open here? Not quite. Knocked away good coverage there from Gonzalez. Third down and eight from the 12. Looking to throw. Throwing it up for Greg Dulcich. It's just slightly overthrown from Tannehill. It's fourth and eight. We will settle for that field goal. 29 yarder for Will Lutz. That kick is up. It is good, and it is 30 to 13 for Denver. First and 10 from the 25 for the Patriots. Needing to get some points on the board here to keep the game at least a little bit close. A great run for Ezekiel Elliott, brought down by Caden Stearns at the 45. He is averaging nearly nine yards a carry. We are getting smoked on the ground by Zeke. Good thing the Patriots are playing from so far behind because they likely won't be using him a ton as they use him again immediately. And it's going to pay off in a big way. He might have a touchdown here. Pat Sertan can't bring him down. Caden Stearns does at the one. And he's up to 143 yards on the day. Who knew Ezekiel Elliott still had that kind of pep in his step. That makes it first and goal from the one. And it's an empty set suddenly for the Patriots. It's a designed quarterback run for Mac Jones, and he's laid out by Justin Simmons. A loss of a yard. That was a QB draw. Very, very interesting. Weird decision when Mac Jones is your quarterback. And they will throw instead on this play, and it is a touchdown for Mike Gesicki. And they cut into this lead with a PAT. It'll only be a 10-point lead for the Broncos as the Patriots add more to the board. Denver takes back over, only up 10. Game is definitely not over by any means. First and 10 from the 25, Tyler Beatty still in the game. It is a carry for him. He has good speed and he's up to the 40, down at the 42, a big pickup for Tyler Beatty. First and 10 from the 42, looking to throw. I'll dump it off to Beatty. Hopefully he can make one man miss. He does, 
and gets no gain as he ends up out of bounds. Samaj P. Ryan has checked in from the 42 on second and 10. We will run with P. Ryan up the gut. Had a good gap to run through. Has a first down for the Broncos. And that sees us at the end of the third quarter. Fourth quarter getting underway here. Only 12 minutes on the clock. Denver up 10 and driving. First and 10 from the 46. Tannehill will take the snap and look to throw. Rolling. Throwing for Marvin Mims who makes the catch. Down at the 14. A great throw from Ryan Tannehill. A great catch from rookie Marvin Mims Jr. First and 10 Denver. Javante Williams is back in the game. They have a loaded front here. wonder if they're blitzing. If they are, I'll throw to Dulcich. And instead, I throw to Javante. He actually holds on to that. A pickup of three down at the 11. Second and seven from the 11. Looking to throw. Jerry Judy wide open across the middle, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown Broncos, the second one on the day for Jerry Judy. And Denver re-extends the lead back up to 16 and likely 17 after the PAT. Patriots take back over. Still basically the whole fourth quarter left to play. We'll see if they can manage to do anything with this drive. But really the issue is that their defense hasn't been able to stop the Broncos offensively in quite some time. That is a reception for Kendrick Bourne. First and 10. First and 10 from the 37. Zach Allen back in the game. That's important. He should be a big contributor here in the final quarter. As this is a throw for Devontae Parker. Breaks a Caden Stearns tackle and is injured on the play. He did kind of take a low hit. First and 10 from the 39 after the big gain. Jones will be throwing again. Dumps it off to Zeke. And he still has crazy speed. Pushed out of bounds at the 16. First and 10. Patriots. Gosh, if they'd been running the ball the whole game, this would maybe be a different story. This is a false start. First and 15 as that flag indicator is now stuck on my screen. Fantastic. You love to see it. From the 21, from under center, the flag has left my screen. It's a handoff to Ezekiel Elliott brought down by PS2. It's going to be second and 12. From the 18, what can the Patriots do here to try to extend this drive? Obviously still third down to come, and I imagine it's four down territory at this point, as I believe that's Fabian Moreau breaking up that pass. So third and 12, nine minutes left to play. I would imagine they go for it on fourth down regardless. From the 18, it is a handoff to Zeke. He goes nowhere, a pickup of one. It's fourth and 11, let's see what they elect to do. They are just kicking the field goal. I guess that makes sense. It's still a two possession game regardless of how many points they're putting on the board here. That kick is up. That kick is good. And it is 37 to 23 in favor of the Broncos. First and 10 from the 22 for Denver. Obviously just looking to burn clock at this point. This is going to be a good carry for Javante Williams. Jukes out a defender and has nothing but green in front of him. Nobody's going to catch Javante Williams. He's into the end zone. Touchdown Broncos. I said we were trying to burn clock. What I meant by that was we were trying to score in exactly one play as Javante Williams does just that, juking out the safety and has the speed to get down the field. And that is a big run and a big touchdown for the Denver Broncos. First and 10 Patriots now down by 21 after the huge Javante Williams rush. And this game looks all but over, but there is eight minutes left to play. It's another designed run for Mac Jones, and it loses a yard second and 11. Mac Jones empty set again. There's no way this is another QB run, right? It is not. It is a throw across the middle broken up by Pat Sertan in the direction of Juju Smith-Schuster. Third and 11, PS2 has entered the zone, and that basically means nothing is headed his way. Third and 11. Throwing a screen incomplete for Ezekiel Elliott. Fourth and 11, you have to assume they go for this. They do go for this. So fourth and 11, what can the Patriots do? Need to convert here for any chance. And that is intercepted by Damari Mathis again. He had a pick six earlier in the game. He has another interception here. He has just earned 
the cornerback two position, I think, for the rest of the season. I was planning on starting him against the Chargers next week as well, just because he has more speed than K1 Williams. Well, that sees the Broncos take over from the 47 with seven minutes left to play to hand off to Javante. He's going to have another good carry here. Can't juke out the same guy he did last time to the 34. Has 152 yards on the day. We'll see Tyler Beatty check in. Javante Williams has done his part for the day. No need to risk any further injury to him. First and 10 from the 34. It is a handoff to Beatty. Has good blockers in front of him, but ran into a defender. It's going to be a pickup of four. Second down and six. So I'm actually going to go play action here and look to throw. From the 30. Montrell Washington is going to be wide open. He is, and he falls down at the one-yard line. First and goal, Broncos. Montrell Washington trying to earn that wide receiver three spot going forward. I don't know if it will be him, but he's definitely been pretty good in this wide receiver three role since he took it over a few weeks ago. First and goal from the one. We're going play action again. Nobody fell for it. The only person falling is Ryan Tannehill. As he goes to the ground at the 10, a loss of nine. Javante Williams back in the game on second and goal from the 10 and a half, really. And this is a good carry for him. Gets back to the three and makes it a much more manageable third and goal. I may just be looking to Marvin Mims immediately. It all just depends on what the defense does. Not looking for Marvin Mims immediately. Remember, Tannehill has decent speed. He finds the edge. Touchdown, Denver. Tannehill is sneaky athletic. I think a lot of people forget that. And he outran the edge rusher, gets the edge, runs it in, and it's another touchdown for the Broncos. And that is the dagger on this one. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw it at the end of that replay, but our left guard, Ben Powers, was running over to celebrate, and he slipped. <laughs> he just fell over behind Tannehill as he's celebrating and then walks away really awkwardly as Beatty and Tannehill continue to celebrate in the end zone. He's like running over to celebrate with his quarterback, slips and falls. He's like, oh, okay, the moment's passed. And he starts to trot off the field. <laughs> this game feels pretty much over. There are still four minutes left, so anything could happen, but Denver has 51 points on the board and I just do not see the Patriots coming back from that. Hasn't exactly been a terrible day for their offense, other than a couple interceptions from Mac Jones as DJ Jones is injured. Our front seven is extremely injured, and it's not a great time for that. First and 10 from the 44. Jones will look to throw. Throws across the middle for Juju Smith-Schuster, who has the catch brought down by Justin Simmons. A dislocated shoulder for DJ Jones. I imagine he misses a, a couple weeks with that. Well, we do have more depth. Zach Allen, of course, still healthy. And Jay Tufele, a guy that we signed off of a practice squad earlier this year, is a decent player. He's not quite on the level of DJ Jones. As that is a great throw and catch from Jones to Bourne. And it's going to be first and goal Patriots. Mac Jones out of the shotgun will throw quickly across the middle. Finds Kendrick Bourne again. And it is a touchdown for the Patriots, chipping away at the lead. Obviously, it's still a bit out of reach, but a little closer at the very least. Can't complain about that if you're a Patriots fan, I guess. So it is an onside kick attempt from the Patriots. From the 35, it's picked up by fullback Burton. And it'll be first and 10 for the Broncos. So Tyler Beatty's still in the game, 51 to 30. We're up 21 with three and a half minutes left. It's all about just killing clock at this point. Tyler Beatty on a decent carry has six yards and the clock will roll. We will snap the ball with four seconds left on the play clock and it's gonna be third and two. The two minute warning has come and gone. A first down here basically seals the game. I mean, if it's not already sealed. Third and two, handoff. Tyler Beatty falls forward, shows off the power. First down Denver and that'll do it. And that is the game. The Denver Broncos drop 51 on the New England Patriots and take a victory here at Mile High, improve to 7-8 and eight on the regular season, and the playoffs are not impossible. Let's take a look at player stats. Ryan Tannehill, 137.5 rating, 19 completions on 27 attempts, 348 yards, two touchdowns, 
no picks, 70% completion percentage. Mac Jones honestly wasn't terrible. He just had two really bad throws that were obviously picked off by Damari Mathis. Rushing, Javante Williams on 17 attempts at 160 yards, 9.4 a carry, and two touchdowns on the day. Zeke killed us on the ground, 13 attempts, 147 yards, 11.3 a carry. Tyler Beatty has kind of just been mid this week and last week. He is not quite impressing me as much anymore. Samaj P. Ryan continues to just be okay. And Ryan Tannehill, three attempts, one yard. In reality, two of those attempts were kneel downs, but did have a touchdown on the day. Receiving, Kendrick Bourne had eight receptions for 70 and two touchdowns. Devontae Parker, five for 83. Marvin Mims was our leading receiver in terms of receptions with five for 75. Judy had five for 167 and two touchdowns. He was huge today, had of course that 86 yard reception. And then honestly, not a ton of participation from other Denver players, two for Javante two for Montrell, two for Dulcich, two for Beatty, one for Pirine. Defensively looking at the Broncos, Damari Mathis led with solo tackles. Total tackles was Pat Sertan, Caden Stearns, and Damari Mathis. TFLs was Baron Browning, Drew Sanders, Pat Sertan, Caden Stearns, Devin Bush, DJ Jones, and Justin Simmons. A lot of tackles for loss. Baron Browning and Caden Stearns each had a half sack. And then, of course, Damari Mathis with two picks on the day. I would say he has earned starting at CB2 for the rest of the season. Like, that was really good. I don't imagine it'll be quite as good against Mike Williams and the Chargers next week. I believe that's our next matchup. But I don't think he could do worse than K1 did the first time we played the Chargers because he just got scorched by Mike Williams because the Chargers just have a really, really quality receiving core. Javante Williams and Jerry Judy each have an upgrade. We'll just continue to pour points into power back for Javante Williams. I think that is his bread and butter. Plus one awareness, plus two carrying, and plus one ball carrier vision. Plus two carrying is huge. He's up to like a 93 carrying. He has 99 break tackle with the plus three, regularly 96. And he's at 99 carrying, regularly 95. He is turning into a beast. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a dev trait upgrade chance next week with the performance today. Jerry Judy has an upgrade and honestly, it's just his hands, man. He's got 83 catching, 84 catching traffic. That's not good enough for me. We need to just continue dumping points into slot, which has one of those or actually both of those as upgrades, plus one catching, plus one medium and plus one short route running. Did not get any catch in traffic, but I'll take the one catching. K1 Williams obviously missed that game. Nick Benito is going to miss five weeks with that broken thumb. That is not good. We are going to put him on the IR. Unfortunate. So I went ahead and advanced the week. If we take a look at the playoff picture, it's mostly the same. In fact, it might be entirely the same on the AFC side. If we take a look at the AFC, the Bengals are nine and six, and they're the only team I think we could catch to make that final playoff spot. They would have to lose lose out. They would have to lose their next two games. We would have to obviously win our next two games to finish nine and eight as well. And then we'd honestly just have to like pray for losses from the Dolphins. And of course we would beat the Chargers once if we won out. So that's not a concern. So obviously we would have to win out and I think the Bengals would have to lose out. And then it comes down to divisional play where the Broncos are currently one in three, obviously with the opportunity to beat the Chargers and then the Raiders in the next two weeks to finish three and three. And the Bengals are three and two. So they only have one conference game left. They would need to lose out, lose that divisional game, which obviously comes with losing out. So they would finish three and three. They would finish nine and eight in total. And then I believe believe the tiebreaker goes from divisional to like opponents. All we really can do is focus on trying to win week to week and just seeing what happens. We, of course, are seven and eight, very much on the outside looking in. Seven wins is kind of where I anticipate the Broncos being in real life, although after getting 70 dropped on their heads by the Dolphins, I'm not so sure anymore. The Chargers are seven and eight along with us and the Raiders, of course, are five and 10. Losing this game guarantees that we would miss the playoffs. One more loss at all guarantees that. Two more wins isn't even a guarantee that we would make the playoffs, but obviously nine and eight is sometimes good enough to be in the playoffs. But I believe if the Bengals win one more, they would 
win that last playoff spot. We can take a look at the weekly awards before we move on. Damari Mathis with eight tackles, two interceptions, and a touchdown wins AFC Defensive Player of the Week. But anyways, that's going to do it for this episode. I really appreciate all the support. If you find yourself coming back on the regular and you aren't already subscribed, go ahead and hit that sub button for me. It does help me out a lot. I'm trying to hit 500 by the end of the year. But on that note, I will see you guys in the next episode where we'll face off against the seven and eight LA Chargers.